welcome students, staff, and faculty of Biola University to the 2013 to 2014 academic year. Please follow along responsively with the words on the screen as we begin this convocation service. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. Let's together declare our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Please follow along on the screen. To whom shall we go? We have the words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we present ourselves to you this year as living sacrifices, which you say is our service of worship. May we do this daily, hourly, moment into moment. Creator, we want to be light absorbing, water drawing branches from the strong vine of life be quick listening, slow speaking disciples of you, teacher. Spirit, may we be humble, need knowing, touch sensitive, shape receiving clay to your loving hands. May we be road following, hard journeying, companion welcoming, post prodigal, father seeking sons and daughters of the way. Walking the fine, fertile, seed receiving soil that we too want to be as you scatter your life giving gospel each day into our lives. May we open the door as you knock, take up the cross as you call, proclaim the good news, tell the old story, and be recognizably reconciling ambassadors on behalf of you, Lord. So give us minds eager to seek your wisdom, memories strong and clear to remember your great deeds, wills quick and nimble to obey, hearts surrendered to love, lives committed to service, and whole hearts to love you and our neighbor. May we do nothing apart from you, Jesus through whose words and names we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Why don't you go ahead and stand with us as we sing this morning? Before the throne of God above. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea. A great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. Tempts me to despair. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, of what I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because a sinless Savior died. There, the risen Lamb, 
My perfect spotless righteousness The great unchangeable I am The King of glory and of grace Born in Himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by guys can go ahead and be seated. Bible University, uh, welcome. Uh, summer is over, although you'd never, know, you'd never know summer's over by being in this warm room today. And I think you new students are probably looking down at the faculty, administrators up here wearing these like thick, heavy bathrobes and wondering like, like wait, are they really that smart at Biola? It's hot in here. Hey, it's great to have you back. So welcome back, returning students. Where are you, returning students? All right. Yeah. And, and new students, new students, where are you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll welcome all of you a little bit more formally, including our new faculty, in just a few minutes. But uh, I do want to just take a moment, let our new faculty here and our new students stand up. We want to welcome you to Biola University. The 105 year plus tradition of Biola University that you are joining is one that is rooted in the firmly in the conviction of our biblical heritage. The conviction of Biola University is seen in the biblical integration that permeates our six schools, the breadth of our academic disciplines, in the lived out discipleship of our faculty and staff, the co-curricular programs designed to enrich your character, and in the community of grace-filled students who pursue courageously their vocation and calling. I look forward to this year as we engage in the world of ideas, as we pray for one another, as we live in community with each other, to share our lives together through meals, through times of rejoicing, through times of difficulty. May God's favor be upon Biola University. Now please be, join me in welcoming our Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. David Nystrom. Thank you, Dr. Corey. Uh, before I present, our new faculty, I have one brief announcement for the students. Uh, students, today's convocation chapel is one of those rare instances when it is possible we will go longer than is scheduled. You know you have a 10.30 class. And I imagine that as the clock strikes 10.20 and then 10.25, welling up inside you, insidious, pullulating in its carcinogenic intent, will be the desire to leave early so that you can be on time for class. I would observe as an aside, this may be the only occasion in your academic career when the temptation will arise to be early to class. <laughs> but we ask you to uh, hold in abeyance your desire to say yes to temptation and remain until the end of the convocation. After all, your faculty, your professors are all here and uh, they also will be late. And everyone knows the rule is, <coughs> And as long as you're there before the professor, you're not late. <laughs> and now for the presentation of new faculty. Uh, I think I would like to ask you to stand if you are uh, new to our faculty. President Corey, as provost, I'm pleased to present to you and to the entire Biola community 15 new appointments to the Biola University faculty this fall. These distinguished and committed women and men join us from a variety of 
educational and professional backgrounds, as well as service literally from all corners of the globe. We welcome their influence and expertise uh, that each of them brings to strengthen our academic programs and our community life in uh, no fewer than 11 areas, including psychology, English, nursing, business, communication studies, theology, biology, and the Torrey Honors Institute, to name just a few. These men and women have followed the call of the Lord to Biola University in order to equip our students to think and live in the light of God's truth and to make a difference in the world for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. I'm thankful for the dedication these new faculty members have demonstrated in their chosen field, for their professional accomplishments and personal journey of discipleship, for the richness they add to the academic life of this institution, and for their willingness to share their wisdom and knowledge and to model Christian thinking, living, and scholarship and service for the students of Biola University. New faculty, I invite you to follow along the responsive script on the screen. Biola University aspires to lead with conviction and courage and compassion, and to equip men and women in mind and character to make an impact on the world for Jesus. As faculty, you are at the forefront of this leadership. Pay close attention to your character and to your teaching. Abide ever more deeply in the vine that the gospel of Christ may not only be heard in your words, but seen in the fruit of your life. Will you do this? Seek not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. <laughs> We're getting the Trinity in there, come on. And may you thrive in your callings, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself. All right. Thank you, you may be seated. Welcome to Biola, that's beautiful. Um, now I'd like to welcome our undergraduate AS President Evan Tan and Vice President Becky Gallagher, as well as Danny Paschal, our Dean of Students. Danny too. President Corey, it is my honor to present to you this morning our new students for fall 2013. It is my privilege to serve in the 2013-2014 years that our undergraduate AS President, Vice President Becky Gallagher and I, along with the rest of the student leadership team, pledge to serve and represent our fellow students faithfully and honestly toward the building up of the Biola community. President Corey, this group of 1,325 undergraduates, including new transfer students, come from 15 countries and 41 states and U.S. territories. In keeping with Biola's high standards of academic excellence, this new group of students has an average unweighted GPA of 3.52. In addition, this fall we welcome 560 new graduate students into our master's and doctoral degree programs. Together, these new graduate and undergraduate men and women join the ranks of thousands more returning students, and together we, the student body of Biola University, are proud to continue the Christ-centered tradition of this great institution. Well, President Corey, I too want to introduce to you the women and men of the fall 2013 incoming class, which today officially adds 1,325 to our undergraduate community and 560 to our graduate community. And since its convocation, it's time for my annual look back at what the world was like the year these students were born. <laughs> it's that time to make all us faculty and staff feel, feel a little old. Most of the years freshmen were born in 1995. What was the world like in 1995? The San Francisco 49ers and Steve Young won the Super Bowl, beating the Chargers. And in 1995, Microsoft released Windows 95. The internet was still kind of small. One report noted that successful homepages could be seen by 20 to 30,000 people a week. 
The MTV Video Music Awards opened with a performance by Michael Jackson. But the big winners that year were Weezer and Hootie and the Blowfish. There was a Batman movie that year, Batman Forever, with Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, and Jim Carrey. And in much less interesting news, Biola's area code changed from 310 to 562. We saw tragedy on a large scale, close to home and also far away. In April, a federal building in Oklahoma City was bombed by a domestic terrorist, killing 168 people. In Rwanda, thousands were killed in the ongoing genocide. It was the year of endings and beginnings. In 1995, we saw the last of both the far side and Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> But we saw the first of two things that would change the world of entertainment forever. The first ever full-length computer animated film, Toy Story. In September 95, the DVD was invented. Yeah, things were changing. This group of students understands that. They're used to transitions. These are successful students, President Corey. Biola is considered a selective university. These students come to us with high grades, high levels of involvement in both school and church. And though they are already very successful, we still surround these students with a safety net. Committed Christian faculty, administrators, counselors, advisors, all devoted to equipping them and minding character to impact the world for Jesus Christ. And so, President Corey, I'd like to take a moment to encourage these students, but to encourage them to fail. Yes, to fail. Not the massive fail. Not the epic fail that ends up on YouTube. <laughs> I mean fail as in not be perfect. You may look around this room and be thinking, wow, I better have my act together because they all look like they have their act together. And spurring each other on to love and good deeds is biblical. But if you take it so far that you never allow yourself to be less than perfect, never admit your weaknesses, then no one here will ever really know you. And you may as well learn to fail here, because you will fail someday. You will disappoint someone. You'll drop the ball. To learn how to fail now, here, surrounded by people who love and support you, is to learn how to rise from the ashes, how to get up after you've been knocked down how to apologize, how to repent, how to change, and how to grow. Abraham was called to leave his home and risk going to a place he'd never seen before, and he had failures along the way. Jesus' disciples were called to leave their familiar jobs and risk doing something they'd never dreamed of, and they had failures along the way. And here you are at Biola, along with the rest of us, all of us, God's glorious failures. Fail wisely, fail boldly. President Corey, I present to you our new students for fall 2013. The new students, would you please stand right now? Hold that towel that you've received. And please follow along responsively with a script on the screen in your, or in your programs. Biola University's vision is to be an exemplary Christian university characterized as a community of grace. We are pleased this day to invite you into this community. In so doing, you are responding to God's call to have your hearts and minds more deeply transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And with that love to serve your neighbor, the symbol of this neighbor love is a towel you hold, reminding you that on that last night, Jesus himself took a towel, washed his disciples' feet, told them to go do the same for one another. And so I ask you today, whom do you serve? Do you seek to abide ever more deeply in the love of Christ? Do you seek wisdom that your love and service may abound more and more in real knowledge?
You may be seated. I'd like to ask the faculty and staff and current students to stand and, and, and turn towards these new students who are now seated. So you stand, they sit, reach out your hands as we pray a blessing upon them. The peace of Christ be over you to shelter you, under you to uphold you, about you to protect you, behind you to direct you, and ever with you to save you this day and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. And new students, let's wave those towels so we can see and welcome you one more time. Right. Now, Professor Tanya Abu Azadeen will come to read our scripture. I will be reading from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. So I say, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And so it is at the beginning of each academic year, we convoke a great and formal gathering of students, of faculty, and staff. Hence the word convocation, an assembly of persons convoked, called together. 50 years ago today, a gathering of around 200,000 was convoked. For Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Today the world tributes that historic day of the civil rights movement. And during that memorable and historic convocation, Dr. King reflected on the journey of those walking toward hope. We cannot walk alone, he reminded the crowds on the Washington Mall. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. Walking. We cannot walk alone. Let's talk about walking at this convocation. Peripatetic. It's a word from the dictionary, not my hipsionary. <laughs> Adjective of relating to, given to walking, noun, one who walks or travels from place to place. So if you look up hashtag peripatetic on Twitter, you see, it has something to do with walking, like Brian Ward's tweet. He said, I do my best thinking in the shower or walking. I must buy a large shower I can walk around in. <laughs> Hashtag peripatetic. <laughs> Random. Come on. So walking will be an important theme and image for us this year. With our university theme, Spirit and Story, Walking It Out. The students, faculty, and staff at Biola comprise over 7,000 unique stories God has brought together. And as a community, we walk together in our diversity as the redeemed made in the image of God. And we need to do this walking God's way, and that is walking by the Spirit. So I say, Paul writes to the church in Galatia, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It's a call to allow the Holy Spirit to challenge you to pray more expectantly, live more faithfully, love more liberally, speak more thoughtfully, dream more boldly, ponder more deeply. It's a call to be renewed and empowered by the Spirit of God. So I encourage you this year, be a peripatetic learner, be a peripatetic witness. To be a peripatetic learner, walking by the Spirit through your education means your studies are more than an academic exercise or a ticket to a job. You're learning more than lists and formulas, facts and disconnected subjects, skills and episodic trivia. At Biola, academic study at its core is a spiritual discipline. Your study is an act of worship. 
intrinsically good, forming the way you think about all of life. And the more you study, and the more you contemplate God's word and God's world, the more you will understand how everything fits together under the all-encompassing truth of God. Living as a peripatetic learner, walking by the Spirit will keep you from being intoxicated by your own learning or seeing your education as the price of admission to the successful life or just eking your way through because you're bored and wondered why, wonder why all this matters. Let me add that your academic work should not be all-consuming as you live in community. I say this for residential students. I say this for commuter students. This is an opportunity that you have at Biola University that you'll never have again. So don't squander it. Get involved. Opportunities are abundant, from student leadership to joining a club to intramural sports to investing in new relationships to serving communities across L.A. and beyond. Spend time cheering on the Biola Eagles, and what a great start to the year yesterday when in overtime the Biola men's soccer team beat Azusa Pacific University. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the combined record for Eagle volleyball, women's soccer, men's soccer to start off the year is 7-0. So give it up for the athletes here. Take an occasional break from your studies to play a video game, but don't take an occasional break from your video games to study. <laughs> Follow the calendar of all we're going to be doing this year to launch Biola Center for Christianity, Culture, and the Arts. Big celebration on September 20th. And allow your learning to stoke or ignite your passion for wonders like music, poetry, science, ideas, commerce, writing, philosophy, language. Be a peripatetic learner, walking by the Spirit, and that means God is not merely a concept to be understood or a thought to be mulled over, but he is the living God. And in return, you are about daily conforming your lives to his will and his character. Your faith journey means that you surrender your intellect without abandoning it to the will and lordship of Christ. And students, you are being nurtured by a community of faculty sitting before you today, anointed by God in their calling as thought leaders and disciple makers. The faculty of Biola University, they hold you as a sacred trust. Bricks and mortar don't carry our passion. Textbooks don't carry our passion. Technologies don't carry our passion. They do. And they've been filled and sealed with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the centrality of Christ is of such great importance to us that on your edu educational journey, you need to understand the centrality of Jesus in all that we do and that in that centrality, you must walk it out. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the 20th century martyr for Christ wrote, I should like to speak of God, not on the boundaries, but at the center, not in weakness, but in strength. Bonhoeffer rejected a diluted, abbreviated, peripheral God. As Eric Metaxas wrote in his splendid biography, for Bonhoeffer, the God of the Bible was Lord over everything, over every scientific discovery. He was Lord over not just what we did not know, but over what we knew and were discovering. And Bonhoeffer wondered if it wasn't time to bring God into the whole world and stop pretending he wanted only to live in those religious corners we reserved for him. To walk by the Spirit is to understand with your heart and your mind that the end of theology is doxology. We study God more to praise God more. And I shared with new students a few days ago a letter I received this summer from a parent of a May graduate who four years ago was sitting right where you freshmen are sitting now. And to me, this is a testimony of what it means to be that Galatians 5, 16, peripatetic learner, leading and learning as you walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. So here's John, a, a dad from Boston, whose son David is now starting graduate school in Philadelphia. He wrote this, had I been asked five years ago, what do you think of Viola? My response would have been, never heard of it. Where is Viola? <laughs> five years later, my response is, I love Viola. When I dropped David off for freshman orientation, I had the chance to ask him two questions. What was he most excited about? And what was he most concerned about? He said he's excited to study scriptures with friends and faculty who take the scriptures seriously and who acknowledge the scriptures authority over their lives. But he was concerned 
that this important academic work could undermine his ability to read the scriptures devotionally, that the Bible might become dry. When I came for his graduation, John writes, I had a chance to ask him again and was pleased but not surprised to hear his response. His excitement was, was rewarded as he studied the Bible with scholars who did in fact take the Bible seriously and who do acknowledge its, its authority over them. And his fears were not realized as this rigorous academic work did not squelch his devotional life but rather made it richer and fuller. I think there could be no greater testimony for Biola's faculty than that. At Biola he wrote, he has been disciplined and discipled to know that it is more important to persuade than to prevail. He has been nurtured to make his case in a way that is not about winning an argument for ego's sake, but winning people for Jesus' sake. He still has a passion for the truth, but now much better tempered with love and with grace. I was pretty proud when I read that letter. And that's what I mean by a peripatetic learner, walk, taking your studies as an act of discipleship as you walk by the Spirit. And not only must we be peripatetic learners, we must also be peripatetic witnesses. More and more people outside the church have no idea who Jesus is because Christians have too often domesticated him. I think we do this because one of our idols is comfort with culture. At Biola, we are not anti-culture, but the way we must live and learn is in many ways counter-cultural. Nurture the desire to walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. I read a few minutes ago from Galatians 5, so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Well, 1 Peter 2, there's a parallel passage read just a few moments ago by Dr. Abu Ezzedin. Dear friends, Peter writes, I urge you as pilgrims or as walkers in the Spirit, right, to abstain from sinful desires and to live such good lives, the good life, among the pagans, why? So that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God. For Biola, the way Peter describes the good life is for us to live among those in our culture who don't understand us, who accuse us of doing wrong, and let them see our good deeds and epic hope and the spirit at work in us, and not see in us what may seem to them to be harsh, outdated, anti-intellectual religious systems. May our walk be our witness that people will see in us a commitment to a cross-shaped gospel, horizontal and vertical. And as we are a peripatetic witness walking out in the spirit, the world needs to see in us the love and hope of Christ. Firm center, soft edges. They need to hear in us thoughtful and reasonable tones, gentle and respectful. No need to pick a fight or merely prove we're right. The issue ultimately, ultimately is not about who is right, it's about who is righteous based on Christ's righteousness credited to us and received by faith. Christ is calling us and the Spirit is enabling us to walk forward as a community of the redeemed, to be redemptive voices, allowing our, our actions to take us to places that we never anticipated before, even when it pushes us outside of our comfort zones and I pray that it will, even at times, as Dean Danny Pascal shared with you, when we fail. Living such a good life that though they accuse us of doing wrong, they may see our good deeds and glorify God. Tozer wrote the dynamic periods were those heroic times when God's people stirred themselves to do the Lord's bidding and went out fearlessly to carry his witness to the world. This summer in India, I was invited to a city called Alalabad. Every 12 years, millions and millions of Hindus gather here for a religious cleansing where three major rivers converge, including the Ganges River. The gathering is called Trivini Sangam, and Christians there discern the oppressive and intense world of the spirits because of this festival. And this city is also the oldest agricultural university in Asia, a growing and thriving school of 10,000 students. And I spent a day with the president of this school who's also distinguished across the country as the president of the Association of Indian uh, Universities. And that's over 400 public universities, like Indiana's Ohio State, Indiana's UCLA, Indiana's Cal State Fullerton, Indiana's University of Alabama. It's for you, Dave Talley. Uh, so you're welcome. Um, anyway, I say that because this guy's, this guy's a big deal. He has a PhD in soil agronomy. Mm -hmm. 
from Kansas State University. And he is a devout follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, so here you have it. In this city with a leading university and distinguished president who loves Jesus is also a city many Christians identify as a place where territorial spirits are at work. So a few years ago, that university president and public intellectual, I might add, he decided to start publicly talking about Jesus. And he'd invite people on weekends to hear about the love and power of God, and they came. And every Sunday, five to 7,000 people come, and they fill the soccer field at that university. And they come other nights of the weekend. On that Friday night, I was there, and I stood beside him, this university president, as he invited people to come forward so he could pray over them. And most of them were Hindu villagers. And he anointed them with oil. And he prayed for the sick to be healed. And he cast out demons in Jesus' name. And he was praying in these conversational tones like a Presbyterian. He wasn't like this screaming evangelist. And when those with evil spirits lined up, he talked to them and prayed over them in English. And the tormented girls or men or women he prayed over would answer his questions even though they knew no English. And the interpreters behind us were explaining this as we watched. And the university pre president told us later that legions, evil spirits, are able to understand what he's saying. So he speaks in English to discern if the spirits possessing them are truly demons. I, I never, I've never seen anything like this, okay? But as I thought about it, as I talked to the person I was traveling with, I mean, that, what happened that night's a reality everywhere. And that is a ba battle between good and evil, between light and darkness in the realm of the spiritual world. It may not seem as dramatic in our culture, but it's no less true. We wage war against flesh and blood, not against political parties, not against those who don't agree with us, but against principalities of darkness that are dead set on stealing and destroying. And I tell this story as a reminder that the Spirit of God is powerfully at work in our world and at this university in a way that will up upend the evil one and will draw all people toward the resurrected and exalted Christ. So I say to you, Paul writes, walk by the Spirit and not the desires of the flesh. May we understand anew even in this year of spirit and story, that there is truth in the words of Christ. And there's power in the name of Christ. And the truth leads us to conviction. And the power leads us to courageous steps of faith. And God is on the move in this world. So I invite you in a spirit of prayer and epic faith and lives of righteousness, let's join him and see what wonderful work he can do through us in our residence halls, in Los Angeles, in India, anywhere. And one of the ways in which we'll be doing that peripatetic witness this year is by making known God's love and his word to places that have not been reached, like language groups in India. I was thinking about this this summer over the streets of Hyderabad, having talked to some SMU leaders, and so I uh, made a little iPhone video. This is a message to all the students. Uh, I know that one of the big uh, projects you're going to be taking on this next year, working with the Seed Company, is a New Testament translation that's going to be taking place uh, by the initiative of Biola University students. And I just want to let you to know how incredibly proud and excited and honored I am that you are taking on this big challenge. And uh, I can't wait till um, the project is done and some of you can actually bring that translation for the first time to the community somewhere here in India. I'm not sure where it's going to be, but somewhere in India and um, one more advancement of the gospel uh, through the students at Biola University. So let's rally together as we partner with the Seed Company and SMU to launch the India Project. This project aims to translate 24 key Bible stories into several unreached native languages of the Indian people. And this year, this year marks the 25th anniversary of the landmark trip Biola's SMU 
teams led to India raising nearly $100,000 and sending 32 students there to proclaim the gospel. And it is with the, th the same theme, the same confidence in the spirit that we walk forward today and rekindle our relationship with the people of India by helping initiate first time gospel conversations. This is one tangible way as students, you can be that peripatetic witness walking with Christians globally in the spirit of partnership. Not only by loving others through offering them the word of God, but also by loving, uh, loving others, by caring for them through, through health care and through education, starting businesses, and by setting captives free in Jesus' name. So walk in the spirit as peripatetics, the learner and the witness. Live such good lives among the pagans so that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God. And I am overwhelmed at the capacity of what will happen. 6,300 students and hundreds of faculty and nearly 1,000 staff, all God's daughters and sons, resolve to believe in what God can do through his spirit and for the sake of his glory. And as we begin this academic year, let us resolve to be a community walking by the spirit, peripatetics, all of us. For as we do, I know God's glory is gonna show up in this place in ways that will revive our hearts and call us to new challenges, courageous ideas for the cause of Christ. This, Biola, is our legacy. As we launch this year, may we, a bunch of sinners fallen short of his glory, resurrected by his grace, may we see the glory of the Lord who is high and lifted up, the glory of the resurrected and the exalted Christ. New students, welcome to Biola University. From across the country, from around the world, we welcome you, we love you, we believe in you, we will stand beside you, and we will walk together with you by the Spirit. And for all of us, welcome to the 2013-2014 academic year. Let the semester begin. Please stand for the benediction. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new year. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.